And, but when you were imprisoned during martial law in Poland, martial law was imposed in, uh, um, December, on December 13, 1981 to crush and dissolve solidarity, the structures of this parallel society that they, um, in the 16 months, they created. So 20,000 people were arrested. Adam was one of them. He stayed, uh, he stayed in prison much longer than most of them. So I do know that you are not pacifist, yet during martial law, you um, argue for a revolution that would be self-limiting, that became broadly known, the concept, you became broadly known as the author of the concept of the self-limiting revolution. What is self-limiting revolution? How revolutionary is such a revolution? Zwieta, mówiąc, że nie byłem pacyfistą, nietościwie przepisała ta poparłem interwencję. Poparłem interwencję w Iraku. Gdyby tego nie, nie powiedział, to byście znali, że jestem oszustem. But then you've written in your review of books that you were wrong. <laughs> would I know then what I know now? Yes. Okay. No, I would you should know. <laughs> the concept of the self-limiting revolution doesn't come from me. Być może ja wprowadziłem je w obszar amerykańskiej publikacji, ale ono, ono, ono w Polsce było, funkcjonowało wcześniej niż ja użyłem. It's possible that I introduced it into the American uh, publications and debate, but in Poland it existed before and I used it. W moim rozumieniu to oznacza trzy rzeczy. In my understanding it means three things. Pierwsza rzecz to przekonanie, że trzeba się zatrzymać przed przemocą, bo przemoc rodzi przemoc. Czasem nie ma innego wyjścia. Dlatego popierałem zamach na Hitlera i wojnę z Hitlerem. Niemniej jednak trzeba robić absolutnie wszystko co możliwe, żeby nie sięgać po przemoc. Po bojówki organizowane przez Służbę Bezpieczeństwa napadały na wykłady dla latającego uniwersytetu, to wtedy wielu ludzi mówiło, dlaczego wy nie weźmiecie So in Poland, when there were these fighting units organized by the security apparatus and they would attack the flying university, many people would ask them, why don't you reach for weapons for sticks and chase them away? Sticks, not weapons. Sticks. Why won't you? I said, we don't use weapons in Kyiv. And I would say we can't win a war against the Soviet Union by using sticks. U Havla jest taka formuła, że idee działają jak broń bakteriobójcza. So Havla has this idea that ideas can work like bacteriological weapons. Że one jakby uderzają w organizm i są w organizm dedyktatory są i bywają silniejsze niż samoloty i czołgi. That they can strike at the organism of the dictatorship and they can be stronger than um, planes and tanks. Drugie rozumienie samoograniczących się rewolucji było, było takie, że trzeba się wyrzec utopii jako realnego projektu po, po politycznego. 
so the second, um, second piece of thinking about this uh, self-limiting revolution was the fact that one would have to denounce the idea of a utopia as a realistic political project. Whoever wants to build a country in which there is absolute equality will be building concentration camps because only there do you find absolute equality. Lepsze są zmiany stopniowe niż wielka z, 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 zmiana, która wszystko przełaca do, do, do góry n, n, nogami i prowadzi do katastrofy. So gradual changes are better than when great change which turns everything upside down and leads to a catastrophe. Ja miałem w oczach rewolucję w Iranie. I had before my eyes the revolution in Iran. Która za, zaczęła się od walki o, o wolność, a skończyła się islamistyczną teokracją. Which started <coughs> as a fight for freedom, but it ended in an Islamist theocracy. Polska jest krajem katolickim. Ja się bałem, że coś takiego w Polsce się może zdarzyć. Poland is a Catholic country and I was afraid that something like that could happen there. No, ponieważ za to porównanie byłem bardzo krytykowany przez ludzi Kościoła. The folks in the church criticized me quite a bit for making this analogy. Nie, 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 jednak ja myślę, że i dla Kościoła, i dla demokracji, dla dobra Kościoła, to trzeba było mówić. But I think that both for the good of the church and the good of the democracy, this was something that had to be said. Znaczy, że, że rewolucja się musi gdzieś zatrzymać. But the revolution has to stop somewhere. Jak idzie bez końca, to, to kończy się te, te terrorem. Ja jako bińskim, czy bobonszewickim, czy terrorem, a ja to lat. If it doesn't have an end, then it will end in Jacobin, or in Bolshevik, or Ayatollah's terror. No i trzecie rozumienie, no to oczywiście ja patrzyłem na mapę, no ja widziałem, gdzie, gdzie Moskwa jest. And the third meaning of, of this revolution was that I was looking at the map and I saw where Moscow was. Więc żeby chcieć zmienić Polskę, trzeba było przewidywać reakcję Moskwy. So when one wanted to change Poland, one had to predict the reaction from Moscow. Nikt z nas nie był w stanie prze, przewidzieć w, 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 w 80 w 1981 roku, że 10 lat później Związek Sowiecki się rozpadnie. In 1980 or 1981, none of us was able to predict that 10 years later the Soviet Union would fall apart. Well, I don't know. Żeby to było ważne, żeby robić to important. Why was it important to make a revolution when thinking about the reactions of, of Moscow? No, dlatego, że człowiek mojego pokolenia Kogu. pamiętał so, so, sowiecką interwencję w Budapeszcie w 1956 roku. Pamiętał interwencję w Czechosłowacji w 1968 roku, interwencję w, a, a, w Afganistanie w 1979 roku i miał obowiązek przewidywać, że jest mo mo możliwa ta taka interwencja w Polsce. So it's because the person of my generation remembered the Soviet intervention in Budapest in 1956, then in Prague in 68, again in Afghanistan in 79, and they had the duty to predict that such an intervention could also happen in Poland. <coughs> we, are opening the, we are opening the floor, and I like uh, actually uh, to do one thing before, before we do it. I would like to people from the from downtown to um, to quickly just introduce themselves because I think Adam would like to, to know it. And so we will go very, very quickly around the table. But just say, if, if you are from Occupy, you just, yeah, you just say, it. yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll still start here. Go ahead, quick. Um, I'm 68 generation. 68, <laughs> okay. I'm Harrison, I'm an anarchist. I'm a co-organizer of Black Wall Street, and I'm still I don't know what I'm doing, I'm tired. <laughs> also, we also have sociology, yeah, <laughs> PhD yeah, candidates. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on with Occupy Wall Street, and yeah. I started it now with an academia. Oh, Tim Weldon. Yeah. Yeah. I'm Lily, I'm, yeah. I'm, Lily. I'm also um, a, a sort of an academic and a PhD in anthropology, but um, primarily at this point in time I'm down at Wall Street. 
Yeah. Or the things down. The things down, not sleeping down. You want just the yeah. Yeah. Jonathan Shell, I'm with the uh, Bible speak in spirit. <laughs> Jonathan was giving the first, very first, uh, you know, um, um, conversation here, yeah. And also I'm, uh, with uh, with Occupy, was sitting in spirit. I'm a 1968. I come from Warsaw. I used to be Adam's neighbor um, in the um, late 70s, and I'm. I'm very much involved. Uh, I don't sleep in Chicago Park. I don't have there. But I think it's the most important thing that's happening uh, for us at the moment. So and you are an artist, huh? I'm an artist. I wanted to thank you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jan Baron. Mm -hmm. okay. Hi, I'm Elisabetta. I'm a school here at the new school. I don't camp out in Zagori, but I'm a demonstrator. <laughs> I also don't occupy Wall Street, but I'm also with you. My spirits. Um, I'm from Georgia. To write this Georgia Rush, uh, Stormer, Soviet Union. Uh, so uh, problem of occupying, but in different aspects, it's very important for Georgia also. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, my name is Marta Storia. Hi, Pavlina, my and uh, I'm a student here at the new school. Um, my name is Greg, or Gregos, uh, in, in some places anyway. I'm a computer scientist, has nothing to do with politics, and really nothing to do with, with occupying Wall Street either, even though it definitely sounds interesting. Uh, I just stopped by out of, uh, well, uh, uh, mostly, mostly attracted by the name of Adam Mickey, uh, to, to be honest. I'm Nicholas Gudrelis, I'm a student here at the New School, I'm from Lithuania, and uh, I'm from, uh, I'd say, last generation of the revolution of 91 in Lithuania, that's why I'm here. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Robin. Uh, my academic background is in anthropology and human rights law, uh, and I've also been an online organizer for the website OccupyWallStreet.org since the summer. Mm -hmm. I'm Lawrence Jato. I'm from Montreal. I'm an organizer of Occupy Wall Street from Montreal, and I study anthropology with mm -hmm. uh, My name is Scott Ritner. I'm a PhD student in politics here at the New School, and I work with TCBS. Um, I don't sleep in Zuccotti Park, but I am down there almost every day, uh, acting as a variety of things, including providers. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jaroslav. I come from Prague. Uh, I just came from Prague a few days ago, and we opened recently an exhibition which tries to reconnect this occupation of movement in Europe, and that's also why I'm here. What's your last name? Anjel. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, I just I thought that I kind of know, but I'm <laughs> There's officially an angel here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Turns out, me yeah. I was wrong. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm out and I'm in this question. Hi, I'm Justine. Um, I created the OccupyWallStreet.org website, and I've been involved in helping <coughs> out this uh, movement for three months now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm Jeff Goldfarb. I'm a uh, teacher at the new school and a co coordinator of this uh, seminar. And an old friend of that. <laughs> My name is Morrison Hive. I'm an artist and I'm with Occupy Wall Street and the Think Tank. I'm just going to have to go. I'm excited to learn about Occupy Wall Street and find out as much as I can about it. My name is Ian Gross. I'm a 68er. She's <laughs> 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 a Princeton. There is a second row, very quickly. My name is Peter. I'm in New School. I'm a student here. My name is Amy. I'm a student at the New School. Mm -hmm. I'm a member of the General Assembly. Mm -hmm. My name is Alex. Uh, the same situation as students. Mm -hmm. I'm Peter. I'm a student at the New School and a freelance. Designer. Photographer, make the, the pictures. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Helena. I'm a PhD candidate here in sociology at the New School and Boston University, and I recently co-wrote an article about Occupy Wall Street for Politica. Um, Michal Babjonia, I'm actually a grad student in Princeton, and I'm just curious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
All right, so here we are, and uh, the floor is actually yours, and uh, we can do, you can, you, 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 uh, you are welcome to do to him whatever you want, <laughs> but I think that there are two things, we, you know, we, uh, as I said, we were there yesterday, uh, briefly, we went downtown yesterday briefly, and we were, we, we noticed um, and that there is a, that, that there, there was a, a, a rather difficult discussion in the assembly going on, um, and that that people were talking about the new formula about spoke spoke groups, spoke, spoke, spoke councils versus general assembly. Uh, I don't know whether you want first to tell us something what's going on, or whether you would like to take this opportunity and mostly bring your ideas uh, or, or questions that you are uh, you are you are facing right now as the movement uh, evolves and uh, have an uh, opportunity to discuss them in front of others. Yeah. Um, this isn't actually the proposal that went through. It's the first draft, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the draft just prior to the draft. Okay. So, I mean, I don't know if people have passed it around. People just want a little bit, and then we can bring that back. Very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and then we Quickly, it just glance at it. Yeah. And uh, it was contemporary. Now I'm hearing similarities, you know, across generations. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm definitely seeing a consistent dynamic here, and it seems to me that. Um, yeah, it seems to me that, you know, authority always seems to lose its legitimacy as soon as it starts punishing behaviors that are morally legitimate. You know, as soon as, as, soon as society starts punishing people for behaving in proper ways, ways that are, are clearly identifiable as, as contributing to sociability or, or democracy or freedom, when, when, when those collectively agreed upon values, when people are punished for... for behaving in accordance with those collectively agreed upon values, that's when I think the system starts to lose legitimacy. And, and every time we've been punished for trying to do something democratic, trying to get together, you know, by the NYPD or by the media or by anybody, that's when this movement seems to grow the most. Mm-hmm. I should actually say something about that. Hold on, hold on. Let's just make sure that do you, you finish that, yeah. so I think? Yes. The Yashap's absolutely is good, absolutely. To I absolutely agree with that 100%. Uh, but we just heard that the movement itself is not able to do to accept it. And I would only add to that that the movement delegitimizes itself when it turns to behaviors that are impossible to accept. When it breaks into stores or put, puts cars on fire. To można psychologicznie zrozumieć i wytłumaczyć. Psychologically one can understand this and explain it. Ale trzeba wiedzieć, że to oznacza delegitymizację ruchu. But one has to know that that means the delegitimization of the movement. I to był wielki problem w and that was a great problem in 68. When the uh, protesting students in Berkeley were burning the library. It was a delegitimization of the movement. And mm. also, if I can continue mm -hmm. to okay. sort of build upon this. It also seems like there is a certain tactic that works in each of these situations. It seems that when, it seems like the game, you know, it, it's about provoking the other person to react in that violent, violent manner, in that, that impressive manner. It seems like, like for instance, I, I remember I've done an admin assistance at banks. I've, I've been an admin assistant for the enemy, essentially. And I remember this this one guy, this one this one banker I, I had to assist. He was a total asshole, and he um he would always like just like very demeaning, always trying to humiliate me, like make me feel belittled, you know. And I, I recognized this sort of sadistic behavior on his part, and I sort of realized if I just sort of submitted to it, if I just sort of walked into the office and like. My demeanor, I, I would try to like act a little bit defeated. I, I stopped shaving, I just wore the same tie all the time. And I, I made it, I didn't resist. I just sort of walked in there and let him you know, be aggressive. And I, I, I spoiled his game. Like he didn't enjoy 
giving me a hard time anymore. And it seems like there's something similar between that micro act and what we're doing here. It seems like by showing up in these rags, you know, by showing up, by, by putting ourselves out there and submitting ourselves to this, to the weather and the elements and this police harassment, it seems like that, that has a delegitimating effect on the authority system. Like we're being, we're, we're submitting to punishment for no reason just to show everyone else that the system punishes people illegitimate, for illegitimate reasons because it's not a legitimate system. I don't know. I'll stop talking now. Yeah, and then there will be. Do you want to ask to uh, say yeah, yeah, one? Yes, not that. Just one thing I want to say. To call you, I mean, by the very much the working of your establishment, police, is for a change. So remember that there's two kinds of audience here: there's the establishment and the police and the society. Yes, really, but it's a party. It's called Marwaz. To będziecie równie zalienowani od społeczeństwa jak ta władza. That just seems so relevant to my experience of spending time in this cottage park and being part of the think tank, really trying to understand what sort of ideas. If you could speak a little slower. Really. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so just from spending time in this cottage park, I just felt that there was certain things that really resonated with what your explanation of, of Poland in the time when you were very politically active. Um, but, but this question of, of morality, I guess what I find, I'm, maybe I'm being too much. <laughs> as an anthropologist, yeah. but I, I guess the thing that I, I, I think I, I don't understand it as an absolute category in these situations. When you're faced with an unprecedented scenario, which I think is what what has brought so many people together, morality is something that necessarily emerges. It's not it's not definite. Nobody has one, on, and what we see in the think tank is people are grappling with very, very different ideas of what kind of moral content this sort of movement should have. Firstly. Secondly, hold, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> even for us, it's, you know, <laughs> even we have to follow. Yeah, no, it's great. <laughs> so, no, you would be next to as, as you're speaking. So yeah, yeah. You're yeah. 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 Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think we'll stick on it. Secondly, um, you also mentioned an issue Firstly, this question of being there, like presence, is so important. You mentioned, you said, the state doesn't accept kind of parallel institutions unless you actually make them happen. That's obviously very resonant to what's across the heart of the um, and all the occupations, we should say. Um, but the question, that, that thing of presence and what these kind of institu institutions do, these parallel institutions, if that's what we want to call them, I would say is actually a question of ethics. Because what I think we have down at that park is not just a, a set of moral concepts. We have ethical practice mm -hmm. emerging in that mm -hmm. space. We, we are offering food, we are offering shelter, we are offering clothing and a library and arts and culture to people. And I say this again and again and again. And I see that as an emergent set of ethics in the face of failing governance. Um, I guess this, this is becoming, I think, when we get back to the discussion about the Spokes Council, I think this is kind of a critical moment in the movement of trying to understand the relationship between its concepts and its practices. And I just think the relationship between morals and ethics is really, really critical aspect of that discussion. Scott. I, I have to just completely disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, the, I, and, and this is also a question for, for Adam. There's, there's a fairly drastic difference between the sort of moral political code of the totalitarian societies of Eastern Europe and the bourgeois morality that we are dealing with in the United States. And to simply replicate that, to replicate these ideas of, of um, you know, uh, uh, the, the sort of, not just a, not a necessarily a democratic morality, but a, a bourgeois morality arts and culture and we're doing all these things that you should be doing, you should be doing this. Uh, the, the moment at which the, the, the political powers that be actually lose legitimacy 
is not when you show that they're not living up to their own, own moral standard. It's when they're unable to maintain the moral standard that they want for us to replicate. So if we continue to act in the same way of which we expect the government to act, if we attempt to set up a, a, a morality of our own that is the same as their morality, then we're not changing anything. Then we will we will end up we will end up in many ways with the same failure of the sixty eight movement in France, which is a more artistic, a more free vo version of capitalism, which is in fact more exploitative and creates more poverty. Until we can actually release ourselves from these very moral codes that the material situation demands, we're not getting anywhere. Can I just respond because I actually think that I, I actually agree with you, one, and I think you might have misinterpreted it. I don't see our government valuing healthcare. I don't see our government yeah. valuing so I don't think those values are in place in our government. Arts and culture, fine. You can set that aside. But it's, until it, it's but it's a human right. They want to right. have a culture <laughs> down, down, down there. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 the morality, it's the morality of the, the bourgeois self-subject. It's this idea okay, of, <laughs> because we own ourselves. Can that's I the basis of it. All, all, I, all I'm trying to say is that I think, I think the question right now is actually much more if those things, what I hear going on, one of the discussions I hear going on down there is that, for example, the food, the food uh, should be primarily for the people who are my, you know, who are in the movement as opposed to anyone who wants it. I think it's really strong to hold it there for anyone who wants it, the same with the shelter, the same with the same with the state. It's gonna get more critical, this discussion gets more critical, but I think that is, uh, whatever you think about the bourgeois subject in arts and culture, I probably have very similar opinions to you about that in many regards, I don't think it's so total. Yeah. I, I, feel like, um, I feel like I feel like this isn't, this isn't a, a this is not about morality. This is about a subject that emerges through ethical practice, daily ethical practice, which is like dealing with the kind of contestations we have in that space. Who's involved? Who's not involved? How do we understand that to be going on? I mean, I, I actually don't think we're in disagreement about that. No, How I, I, I don't think we're necessarily talking about two different things, but I think the, the, the point you bring up about you know the different situations is important to point out. You know, Adam was dealing with very fascist, totalitarian kind of system where you know, the control was through direct violence. We're living in a system... Something very specific. Well, uh, no, no, let, let he's, he's dealing with... Uh, all right, I didn't get the labels right. But he's dealing with the direct okay. form of... Like, I'm not going to split hairs. I'm just too tired and cranky. <laughs> but he, he's, he's, he's dealing with a different form of oppression. We're dealing with a system of oppression that's far more passive done through consumption and advertising and media. But I think the thing that we're identifying here we're identifying a similar critical dynamic in which the system does seem to lose legitimacy when it starts punishing behaviors that are morally ethical and are collectively defined as morally ethical. And I think I, I absolutely have to agree with Lily about the way the way she's talking about this is moral practices and merged with ethics. The way I've been I've been saying the same thing, but I, I say it a little bit differently in terms of this isn't really a political movement for me anymore. It's just a lifestyle switch. We're, we're choosing to live in ways that do completely contradict the capitalist system. We're giving away food for free. We're giving, we're giving, no one's getting paid. We're doing all this volunteer. Okay. Uh, do, 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 do you have any, uh, you have a response? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. And then we will ask Adam. Yeah. And then we'll move on. Yeah. So I, I agree in a lot of ways about our consumer culture and not only materialism, but we consume, uh, being subjects to to our own oppression, I guess. And I've seen a lot of focus on attacking the people who have power in this country, uh, but I think it's more of a problem that we have with ourselves and the way we live. And I think uh, Occupy Wall Street is uh, itself also just is an example of people who want to live their own way and, and create a model of how they want to live. And so there's this conflict of attacking people in power, but at the same time uh, being emblems of what they want for themselves. And I think a question that I have is, um, are we are we looking to create a, a new source of power from within ourselves, or are we looking to take away power from somebody else? And what I think is more important is creating a, a new source of power from within ourselves, because leading by example, I believe, is the best way to project a positive. Uh, I'll also, <laughs> well, now, I just want to say quickly, it seems to me that I think most of the people here would agree 
that capitalism forces us to live in ways in which we know are unethical. Buying things, we, 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 this is something we know, and we are trying to do something completely different. We are trying to live in a completely different, more ethical way. And we're being punished for trying to live in a more ethical way. And as we continue to try living in an ethical way, the more we're punished for it, the more the system is going to lose legitimacy. Adam, <laughs> what are you making out of it? I mean, just, just interesting, and then we'll go around again, okay? Because it was about morality, so it was about the ethics, and it was about the way we live. It's not just about we are, we, you know, we, we are as a part of the system, but but we as a part of the system, as the members of this, you know, as a participants, um, and in opposition to the system. Finish, finish. Yes. <coughs> W tej chwili ten ruch wasz, nie tylko tutaj, ale wszędzie w świecie, stoi przed pytaniem o instytucjonalizację. So it seems to me that at the moment your movement, not just here, but throughout the world, is facing a question about institutionalization. Ci, którzy mówią, że to jest śmierć tego ruchu, oni mają rację. Takiego ruchu nie, nie da się ciągnąć w nieskończoność. Those who say that it's the death of this movement are right. This kind of movement can't go on forever. What does that mean? No. What does? What does? No, no. So, wait, no, no, no. Let's block this. Let's block this. 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 Po drugie, jeżeli się chce zmieniać społeczeństwo, to nie można wykluczać jakiejś formy sięgnięcia po władzę. And the, secondly, if one wants to change society, one can't exclude some form of reaching for power. To znaczy, jak chcę, chcę być zrozumiany teraz dobrze. To nie znaczy, że każdy z was powinien chcieć być kongresmenem, czy ministrem, czy gubernatorem. Ale to znaczy, że nie można się uchylać, od, od, od tego, żeby chcieć popierać takiego kandydata na, na gubernatora, a, a nie innego. Czy wystawiać własnego kandydata? Or to, one's own to, to był paradoks ruchu zielonych w Niemczech. That was a paradox of the Green Party in Germany. Teraz, jak ja słyszę, że chcecie odrzucić społeczeństwo burżuazy. When I hear that you want to turn away from or, or throw away, reject, reject the bourgeois society. To ja to słyszę nie pierwszy raz w życiu. It's not the first time that I'm hearing this. <laughs> I heard it many times before. And I ask them the question. If you want to be in the world without money, then what would you like to replace money with? And each time I ask if you want a world without money, what would you like to replace money with? <laughs> o życiu w, w, w wydzielonych wspólnotach, jak, jak na, na Wall Street. Na Wall Street się obejdziecie bez pieniędzy, bo dobrze ludzie wam przyniosą jedzenie. In Sukkoti Park, you can make do without money because kind people will bring food. Not on Wall Street. Very right. Very right. Very true. Yeah. Okay. Tak. Natomiast 
i, i jeżeli myśleć realistycznie o przyszłości, to kto chce zmienić ca cały świat, ten nie zmieni nic. W 68 roku ruch amerykański miał dwa jasno sformułowane postulaty. In 1968, the American movement had two clearly formulated uh, postulates. To end segregation. To end segregation. To end the war. And not immediately, but over time it won twice. No, it's z, z kolei w Polsce by, były też jasne po postulaty. In Poland the aims are also clear. Cenzura, swoboda słowa i tak dalej. Na początku przeszegraliśmy, ale z czasem wygraliśmy. Więc pytanie moje jest na następujące. Czy widzicie sensowność zbudowania takiego systemu po postulatu? Do you, see the, do you see any sense and any meaning in creating such a um, set of, of ideas or aims and questions? I czy, I czy widzicie sens instytucjonalizacji? And do you see meaning in institutionalization? Um, you talked earlier about um, ideas as bacteriological weapons. And I think that for us, the lack of demands has served as a form of bacteriological weapon. And it has allowed us to enter into the consciousness of a lot of different peoples and a lot of different groups while bypassing traditional political polarizations that have been built up in this country um, along you know, partisan lines, Republican versus Democrat, communist versus capitalist. And I believe that um, that is one of the more innovative things about our movement, as well as the way that we use the internet and social media. Um, and the second point regarding institutionalization, I think it's something that we're all very afraid of. Um, something that I've begun to experience being here on the ground is that I feel most effective working in small groups, in affinity groups. And I'm concerned about the General Assembly's becoming a political structure. And for me personally, as an anarchist, uh, at this point in the struggle, I think it's important to maintain the autonomy of small groups of people working in solidarity with other groups, including General Assemblies, unions, civil rights groups, and others. Um, but institutionalization of power is something that I'm very afraid of and that I work actively to do. Go ahead. Yes. Uh, <coughs> I, I, mean, I have uh, uh, grown at this point um, a bit, but I had to disagree with something that came before. Um, in terms of institutionalization, if it means something, if it means a sort of institutionalization as in we becoming institutions, um, this is not entirely against our goals, only the modalities in how this is accomplished. As for now, the movement has a lot of contradictions that are still not to deal with. However, if it's an institutionalization as in entering the mainstream of American politics, it would be really it would essentially kill the movement. It would essentially kill not only the movement but the spirit of the movement as mm -hmm. the movement is functioning right now on those principles that are not those of the current political arena in the US, which is essentially, as some people it, two branches of the capitalist party. Um, I must disagree, however, with the idea that we're only seizing, that we are only building internal power, because we are actually also about seizing power, because at this point we are we cannot only build, build up internal power because there is already a structure in power outside, which is already which we which we must seek to also overthrow, because merely building 
internal power, which to me feels like spiritualist, which to me, I'll be fair, feels a bit like spiritualist nonsense. Um, if we only hold up internal power, we'll face the same problem that the new left faced since 68. We're following the same traps as the 68, as the new left, which essentially gave, what gave us the basis for the current neoliberal system by giving a more smiling face to capitalism mm -hmm. and essentially ultimately giving us phenomena like new labor, like very, like, I mean, the French Socialist Party has the head of the IMF as its former leader. <laughs> so only building internal power would lead us to a repeat of 68, and we actually need to see it to some degree, not merely do this. We are, move the movement is up there for its own sake. Um, there's a kind of line, unless, okay, is, is to this, is to this issue? Yeah, yes. yeah go ahead. Um, so I understand that a, a shift in power needs to happen, mm -hmm. um, but there's a strong difference between taking power or removing somebody from power and, and replacing power by creating your own. I mean, uh, I believe that all energies can't be created or destroyed, and if there's a rise here, there's going to be a sink here. Um, you know, one thing that, that I just philosophically stand on is that it, if you if your action is to take from somebody else, then what you're inspiring in that person who's being taken from is more selfishness, is more greed. Um, if if you if you uh, don't take and and instead you give what you believe to be right, uh, I think that's more of a positive way of communicating the same message or, or taking on the same goal. But this person will personally but I was taking the water off. Right, and, and conflict of this sort of political conflict, or especially a class conflict of this, it's not a, if you go into it with a positivist idea, then you end up with a Bolshevik-like party. If you posit a particular idea of what should happen, then you're just setting yourself up for either state terror or disaster or both. And uh, I want to sort of build on that idea and answer a little bit about um, a couple other things. Uh, on, on the question of building a lifestyle, I mean, is that what this is about? Is this asceticism? Because that gets us nowhere, right? I mean, and that's, you know, are we all going to, we, we can do what, what the, the Beatniks eventually did. Ginsburg went from being a communist to a Buddhist and stopped acting politically, stopped writing politically, right? Because he became an ascetic. He decided that he didn't want to deal with the world. He wanted his own way of life. And that's that's insufficient, right? Because that just gets us nowhere. Um, and then the, the second thing, um, which I think I forgot. Okay, Adam, do you have a response to that? I, I need to respond to that. Oh, you have a response? Go no, back. Well, I mean, Give him a second to think. Oh. I do. Have, I have uh, a, there's, there's a uh, um, to sort of answer about the, the and to add on about the question of demands and um, the idea of demanding nothing. There's a there's a historical precedent for this, which begins in Italy in the 1970s, but in the United States, which began about four years ago, oddly enough, at the New School, when a group of students occupied a building and called on people to occupy everything and demand nothing. And the idea behind that was that by not making demands, by Explain not... Explain to people who are not from the New School why... Uh, well, the, the excuse, the president the excuse for the occupation was the, the president of the New School, whose name is Bob Kerry, who's a former Democratic senator uh, from Nebraska, a, well, uh, a war criminal from Vietnam, etc., who also was possibly the worst university president in the history of academia. So he kept firing provosts and interfered with the academic. Okay, that was okay. <laughs> so there were two occupations. And the second occupation, uh, which was far more uh, militant and drastic, was the call was to occupy everything and demand nothing. It stopped being about Bob Kerry. It was simply a call that we're fed up. We don't. We we are. We're fed up. This is it. We're done. 
we don't like this, we don't, and, and we don't want to be recuperated. And uh, I think that the ability of Occupy Wall Street to not demand, and the way that Occupy Wall Street has not made concrete demands, um, both serves in the possibility, allows it to not be recuperated, and also what allows it to grow. What do you mean recuperated? Uh, recuperated. Recuperated, um, taken up by the Democrats, or de-radicalized, taken over, co um, and, and has also allowed it to grow into the possibility of a mass movement, because anyone who is fed up can take a part. And I think that that's something fantastic. OK. Um, yeah. Do you want to say something? Oh. Uh, Adam, do you want to say yeah. something? You want to say something? Okay. Uh, Adam, sorry. Okay, yeah. And then we go. Yeah. Oh, he wants to listen to what you have to say. Okay. Um, I, I have to like completely disagree with your premise that spiritual and aesthetic, aesthetic movements don't get us anywhere. Um, you know, it, it, it seems to me that what we have here, you know, Gandhi said that if if you want to, you have to embody the change that you want to see, and I think. You know, the other thing that comes to mind is the reason that the, why the Chinese government persecutes Falun Gong so heavily is because it works. You know, this meditation and sitting around, they're afraid of that. The Chinese government, for all this, like, you know, control and authority that they have, they, they, they persecute these people that are meditating. I have a lot of conversations with a friend of mine at camp who's very involved with the GA. He comes over to my place and we talk and we're like, the, one of the main things, one of our main priorities is maintaining the leaderlessness of this movement. Mm -hmm. And we've agreed that the way to do this is by abolishing our own egos and our own desires to take control and lead this movement. And it's no coincidence, it's no coincidence whatsoever that these people, that all of us basically are doing yoga and meditating every morning. I mean, this, like, it sounds, it sounds new agey and, and fluffy, and maybe it doesn't fit the aesthetic you want of, like, politics and, like, serious discourse. He does yoga. <laughs> <laughs> what I'm saying is that there is a tactic, that there is a dynamic that is working here. The leaderlessness of this movement, as we pointed out, has been directly responsible for its growth. And us not trying to take that power up, this sublimiting thing, this sublimiting nature of this on an individual basis, seems to be crucial. Seems to be critical to growth of this movement. So, I mean, I, I think this is absolutely a spiritual movement. Okay, Angel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I think that it might be useful to consider uh, short term, medium term, and long term, because you are talking about the moment which is obviously very, very important. But the question is, for how long do you want to keep it on? And second question, which is very much related to it, is question of scale. Because it's something else to have a small community there, out there, and it's something else to have worldwide movement. It's interconnected because there is this very potent moment, but still it's not the same, and that's what Adam was talking about. So I think it would be useful to you know, think about this. Uh, I think I'm going to yeah, let you speak now, okay? Tutaj e, padł przykład tego ruchu w Chinach. Guafon, jakoś tam. Mm, you gave the example of Otóż e, to jest bardzo dobry przykład. It's a very good example. Bo to jest religijny. Jeżeli chcecie zakładać na nową religię, to wywaliście znakomitą strategię. Nie, nie, nie trzeba przywódców wtedy, nie trzeba instytucjonalizacji. I głównie trzeba pamiętać o tym, żeby się nie dać wciągnąć. Jeżeli się chce w pociągu, w mecz zrobić po, po porządek, to tego wagonu trzeba wsiąść. Nie, nie da się poporządkować po, po, po wagonu stojąc na zewnątrz. 
if one wants to clean up a subway car, one has to enter into it. You can't be cleaning it when you're stand, standing outside. Ruch sam dla siebie jest przyjemnością psychologiczną. A movement that's just for itself is a, it's a certain psychological pleasure. Tak jak ja l- 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 lubię iść e, do, do kina, gdzie chodzą m- m- moi przyjaciele na dobry film. Just like I like to go to the movies where my friends go to watch good movies, good films. Ale jeżeli ja chcę zmienić m- mój kraj, to to, to nie, nie wystarczy. But if I want to change my country, that's not enough. Ja się spotykam z innymi, nie po to tylko, żeby z nimi być, tylko żeby wspólnie z nimi coś z- z- zrobić. Na przykład z- zbudować most albo założyć sz- 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 szkoły. I get together with others not just to be with them, but to accomplish something together, to build a bridge or a school. A tego się, się, się nie da z- z- zrobić bez y- 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 jakichś postulatów. Już nie taki, które, które się domaga od władzy, ale który się domaga od siebie. And this can't be done without some kind of a demand, maybe not demands for the authorities, but at myself. I bez yes. ja, 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 jakiejś formy instytucjonalizacji. And without some kind of form of institutionalization. Uh, mamy tutaj, mamy uh, też uh, uh, I, 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 I wreszcie y, to, to, co wszyscy podkreślacie, nie macie And finally, this, which all of you have been emphasizing, you don't have leaders. From 1976, I belonged to the Committee for the Defense of Workers. There was no leader there. But everyone knew who had more influence and who had less. Mniejszy wpływ. Amorficzny zespół lu, 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 ludzi bo może sam sobą spędzać przyjemnie czas. An amorphous group of people can enjoy each other's company. Może być przez swoje istnienie wstrząsem dla opinii. Dla władzy. And through its very existence, it could shake up public opinion or the authorities. Ale po, 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 po tym nic nie zmieni. But besides that, it's not going to change anything. Ja myślę tak, że wasz r- 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 ruch się będzie różnicował. I, I think that your movement is going to differentiate. I b- będą tacy, którym wystarczy być ze sobą. And then there will be those for whom it will be enough to just enjoy each other's company. I będą ta, tacy, k- k- którzy b- b- będą próbowali zmieniać y, kraj przez u- uczestnictwo w tych instytucjach, które to pozwalają na te, te zmiany. And then there will be those who will be attempting to change the country by participating in those kinds of institutions that allow to make changes. My, my, myśmy w Komitecie Obrony Robotników mieli <coughs> taki problem. In the Committee for the Defense of Workers, we have the following. The Committee of Workers Defense in Poland was established in 1976 after the big strikes when people went to, where workers went to, uh, to strike and then they were punished after this health paths which were created to beat them up. A lot of people were in prison and the Committee of uh, Defense of Workers was a group of uh, um, citizens who were not afraid to help those workers, collecting money and giving them legal defense. And That's for you just to know. And it was uh, among the intellectuals. And it was in the, yeah, my, students and intellectuals. So we would say we're paying no attention to the authorities, we're not interested in them. <coughs> O, organizujemy instytucje paralelne, żeby żyć nie patrząc na władzę. We're organizing parallel institutions so that we can live without looking towards the government. Więc jak byli lu- ludzie prześladowani, to, to myśmy zbierali pieniądze, o, o, organizowaliśmy adwokatów, żeby ich pomóc. So when there were people who were persecuted, we would collect money and organize lawyers so that we, they could get help. Elżbieta to już m- m- mówiła, o uniwersytecie, o, 
a niezależnych wydawnictwa i tak dalej, i tak dalej. And so as Bertel already spoke about the flying university, about independent uh, publishing houses, etc. No dobrze, ale w pewnym momencie przychodzi taka chwila, gdzie pojawia się wielka masa ludzi i trzeba powiedzieć, co my chcemy dać. And at a certain point there comes a moment where there, there appears a great crowd, great, great mass of people, and we have to say, what is it that we want from now? I wtedy myśmy, myśmy powiedzieli jasno, chcemy wielkiej reformy politycznej i gospodarczej. And at that point we said very clearly, we want great political and economic reforms. I w tym momencie byli oczywiście ludzie, którzy powiedzieli, nas władza nie interesuje. And at that point, at first, there were still people who said we're not interested in the authorities. In power. In, power. in, in power. having power. My z, 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 ostajemy z, sami z sobą. We'll just stay among ourselves. I oni z, 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 zakładali niezależne sz, sz, szkoły, zespoły badawcze, teatry i tak dalej. And they were founding independent schools, research uh, units, and the theaters and so on. I, I to jest okay. And that's fine. Natomiast by, by byli inni, którzy mówi, no, no nie, jeżeli chcemy zmienić ten kraj, to musimy wziąć za to odpowiedzialność sami. Czyli musimy dać się wciągnąć. So we have to allow ourselves to be co-opted. Ta filozofia nie, nie, nie da, Ta filozofia nie dać się wciągnąć jest so this philosophy of not allowing oneself to be pulled in or co-opted is a, is a sort of um, futile philosophy. It's a great philosophy during the totalitarian era. Not to allow oneself to be co-opted by Nazism or Bolshevism. To musisz się sam wciągnąć. Country, you have to step in. I my mówiliśmy w Polsce tak, bo jeśli ty się nie zajmiesz polityką, to polityka się zajmie tobą. <laughs> um, politics, politics <laughs> well, uh, there was Helena who was asking for that very long. Yeah. Yeah. Right, okay. So we'll start with Helena first and we'll go. Yeah. My, my question is more of um, strategy of change because I've been, okay. I've been thinking about what is going on at Occupy Wall Street in terms of uh, the visibility of the movement and how it gains significance, visibility, and some kind of form of legitimization thanks to the violence of the authorities. Um, so looking less at the movement itself, but more at the authorities which it is fighting against, um, what is the, this magical spark that is needed or has been needed before to change a movement of discontent, whether that was 68 or, or any other um, social revolution which was based on social discontent, uh, moral discontent, social discontent, economical discontent, that actually changes this discontent into something that is productive and brings not only a voicing, a visible notion that people are unhappy with what is going on, but changes it into something um, productive, brings, brings change in reality. So the question is, what are those moments, those, those crystallizing moments, those spark, what sparks, that, the, the, you know, when is it happening? Um, should we collect a few yeah. remarks? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I, 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 um, I, I actually want to say something to facilitate the discussion. Be, being that I'm, uh, I sort of am in both worlds. And um, first of all, I'd like to actually challenge the people from uh, Occupy Wall Street to listen very carefully to the second postulate that Adam gave about self-limiting revolution. Listen to it, and, and then I'd like to hear a response, if you have a response. And that is, 
um, Adam and people like Adam and the people who've been watching people like Adam, meaning me, uh, have uh, become very, very wary of uh, utopians and of wanting the perfect, you know, the, the tyranny of the perfect uh, really worries us. And um, I'd like to hear what you think about that. I mean, if, really, I'm not saying what you should think, but I'd like to hear what you think about it. That then, this issue of uh, the, mean, the, the central commitments of the movement, and that you need some message, as opposed to the idea that you don't want to be kind of uh, confined by a message. But I actually hear two competing central messages uh, that are implicit, uh, um, that, at least around this table. Uh, I should say around this table, and as I go downtown and I see things going on downtown, that is the uh, central commission, uh, uh, rather total, totalizing commitment to uh, opposition to capitalism and the idea that somehow it can be overthrown. And I have to say that in light of my first said, first point, I worry about that. And, and on the other hand, um, I think I see uh, um, a, a central concern with injustice and gross inequality. Uh, with which um, I, I don't think that anyone in the movement uh, thinks that that's not a deep problem. And I think actually making that clear uh, is not confining. And I wonder, and I, really, I wonder about the tension between this, because opposing gross inequality opens up many different strategies. Opposing capitalism uh, um, um, suggests um, inclusion and exclusion of, of lots of different people. And then I, I want to, uh, uh, you know, another slogan uh, that has attracted many, many people to the movement is this idea of the 99%. And, 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 uh, and I wonder, uh, uh, I'm actually going to publish something uh, by an economist who explains why this is actually a sensible slogan uh, 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 on Monday, deliberately considered. Deliberately considered. But, but um, uh, I wonder about connecting to the 99%. So, so the idea of connecting to oneself and one's own belief, but actually connecting to the 99%. And then on that issue with uh, uh, the question of institutionalization, particularly connections to you.